Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna do my September wrap up. It is the 29th of September and I do not think I'm gonna finish any more books for this month. So I figured let's get this out sooner rather than later. If I can get my words out, that would be great. So I read nine books. I DNF one book this month. So I've got 10 books in front of me to talk about and I'm going to talk through them from my least favorite to my favorite. There are no five stars in this video unfortunately but I'm hoping that I'm ramping myself up to get a five star read very very soon. I'm very much like into reading at the moment and I'm currently reading The Ten Thousand Doors of January and I am really really enjoying it. I'm only on page 97 but I really like Alex E. Harrow's writing. This is the second book that I have read from hers. I really loved Starling House and I gave that five star and I think it's just her writing that that just there's something about her writing she could probably write about paint drying on a wall but the way that she puts her sentences together I generally really find enjoyable and beautiful to read. So I'm currently reading that. I think that will be a five star, but unfortunately we are here. It is the end of the month and I'm not gonna finish that book in a day. All right, so the first book I have here is the DNF. So it is The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. I had to DNF this because I've just found it really, really dull and really boring. I feel like the premise of it could have been really good. So it's about this girl who basically is in a long line of witches and um, I think it skips a generation, or no, it doesn't skip a generation, but for whatever reason, her mother decided not to be a witch, but her grandmother is still like a witch, a witch of this sort of, I don't know, like this Innisfree. And her grandmother basically comes and says, look, you're a witch, you should come, you know, be a witch with me <laughs> on this island. <laughs> Ultimately, this did end up moving into a direction where it's gonna focus more on a romance as opposed to anything else. And I just wasn't vibing with it. I wasn't driving with it. And I just felt like the writing was very dull. I enjoyed the first 30 pages or so. And then, I don't know, I think I read maybe 130 pages and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. And I it, it's just so gutting because I love honeybees and who doesn't, right? And it's just a gorgeous actual book. It was from Fairy Loot. And it's just such a shame that such a beautiful book can be so boring and dull inside. And I don't feel like I'm missing out because then I went on Goodreads and most people were saying the same thing that was pretty dull and it is getting a lower rating. So it's such a shame, it's such a shame. But I just feel like for a book that's supposed to be about a honey witch, it didn't really have that I don't know, that cozy feeling of a hunt of, you know, you're reading like witchy vibes and stuff. I don't know, I'm into my witches at the moment and that did not do anything for me. So I had to DNF it. Okay, this is the one that I've just actually finished reading today. So this is How to Become the Dark Lord or Die Trying or and Die Trying and it's by uh, Django Wexler. So this starts off promising and I did read the whole thing but I did feel like halfway through the book I kind of wanted to DNF. It was getting to the point where I was getting bored. You basically are with a character. She wakes up. She's in the same place every single time she dies. She comes back into the past. She wakes up in a pool of water and then this guy is there and he's like you have a quest. You must save the people and she's been doing this for she says a thousand years. It doesn't quite make sense in the actual book timeline that it would be a thousand years because you think that she would be less childish in a way or like her personality would sh shift a little bit. I don't know. I just feel like people would grow regardless of like the age. I feel like if you have lived a thousand years, you would behave as if you have lived a thousand years and be wise and be maybe just less silly but anyway it doesn't matter it just I think what ha what happened was I feel like so there's annotations in here right it gives you more thought from the character's mind like they'll say something and then it has a little annotation at the bottom and I don't mind that like I think Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies had that and I really really enjoyed that but that was more like a diary so it made sense she was actually writing out a diary that, or like a paper that she would eventually, you would assume publish and that's the way that the book is written. But I didn't mind it at first, but sometimes there are some pages where there's four of them on a page 
And it gets to the point where why don't you just write it in the actual book itself? Like we we're, we're, we're already know what the character is thinking, right? So why don't you just put it in the story? I don't know. I just, I, it, it kept taking me out because there were so many of them. I think if it had been edited down a little bit, that would have been fine. But ultimately, I didn't really care for, there's another love story in here. I didn't really care for it. And um, I like the whole idea of like a Groundhog Day sort of weird thing going on. But this is heavily inspired by like World of Warcraft or Warcraft or whatever. There's even a whole paragraph talking about places in World of Warcraft. And I play World of Warcraft, so I knew what was going on. But if you are like, it just felt like you were in a game and part of me enjoyed it and a part of me wasn't jiving with it because it didn't seem to be very original with its thinking and the fact that it kept referencing other things in life. Like there's just too many references to pop culture and too many references to like the actual world itself from somebody who has literally been living in this fantasy world for a thousand years. Like I don't think I've explained this story enough but I've given it two stars. I don't think it's like the worst thing in the world. I do appreciate why people would really enjoy this book. And for the most part, it's not a bad book. It just uh, fell short on me. And then also the ending. The ending is atrocious, actually. If they had a better ending, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But the ending just stopped. Just abruptly, it's just stopped. And I can understand like, you know, there's cliffhangers in books and things like that, but I did not appreciate this. I felt like it was a cop-out. I felt like the writer, um, wrote as much as he wanted to write and then he's like you know what I'm gonna make a second book so he decided to end the book as he did because he knew that he could make more money off of a second book as opposed to just having one complete book I didn't really appreciate that so yeah probably yeah pretty negative review there <laughs> but it's kind of in my mind and I, I haven't like stewed enough to think about it because I just finished it this morning so if I had a few more days, maybe I could really pinpoint some things that I really didn't enjoy. But for the most part, I think that's kind of where I am. Okay, moving on, we have Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. Super disappointed in this. I mean, I have heard, I, I knew this had mixed reviews. I knew people didn't really enjoy this book. I know a lot of people don't enjoy Alice Feeney. And this is the third book that I've read from her and the worst one that I've read. So I'm not gonna like totally be like, okay, I'm never gonna read from her again because I have enjoyed her books. I just feel like the, I feel like it was really convoluted. I think the subject matter really didn't appeal to me at the end of the day because I am a little bit sensitive whenever you're talking about children in books or pregnancies. And there is a little bit of, like there's no trigger warnings about some things that happen in the book or the things that are referenced in the book. And I would have appreciated knowing that going in. So that was a little bit annoying. I thought that it was very far-fetched. I just thought, you know, I feel like her books are far-fetched. I liked Daisy Darker because it was, it was far-fetched, but you just took it as it is. Like I didn't take it seriously. And I read another one, His and Hers, and I thought that was kind of fun. I actually really enjoyed that book. Although looking back now, I feel like I probably gave it a way higher mark than I should have. I think I gave that five stars because I just came out of a reading slump. I think if I read that today, I'd probably give it three, three and a half. It's not bad, but it's not like a five star. This one I gave it two. I think I'm being like pretty generous with that. It wasn't terrible, but it's another one where it's a really short book and I, I kind of just wanted to DNF it to be fair. And I didn't and I pushed through. I did tab. But you know, I tab even books that I don't generally enjoy. Okay, next one is this one. This is Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. This one we got in the Luma Crate. Another beautiful, stunning book. I think I also rated this one a two star. I don't really go by any sort of system. I just pick a number that makes sense to me. Some of these are more like 2.5, 2.75, but I round them up and I round them down. This one I think is generally around a two. It's another one where I, I was kind of like in the middle of it and I was thinking, I should probably just DNF this book because I could see where the story was going and it just wasn't interesting enough for me. It became very, very political. It starts off really political anyway, and there's a lot of 
symbolism and metaphors about, you know, uh, racism and, and cultures and immigration and things like that, which is absolutely fine. I think it should be spoken about. But I think the problem I had with the story is it wasn't interesting enough. It didn't like, it was just boring. I just, I don't know. And this is another one where I think the actual book itself is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like that artwork, I'm sorry, but that is, that is skilled, skillful, unless it's from a computer, but I don't think so. I think someone actually drew that. So you have, a, you have a siren or like a half siren. She's half something, half siren. And then you have basically the non-water creatures and then the water creatures, if I'm remembering this correctly. I don't think I am, to be fair. There's like an octopus in here. She's like a witchy octopus. I'm not explaining this very well at all because it is a little complicated when you start to think about what you actually read. I also read this right, I finished this right at the beginning of September. So I did read a little bit back in August. So it has been like a whole month. But basically they're trying to overthrow like corruption in politics or the government or whatever. And there's this whole class system, you know, like the poor are very poor and the rich are really rich. And they don't even realize what's going on with the poor people. And um, yeah, huge comments about immigration and like racism, like what type of creature you are depends on what type, you know, how you're really treated. Um, and they look down on a lot of sort of water creatures, I guess. And they're not treated well. I mean, I'm, I can't, I'm not explaining this very well. The, the book ended up setting up itself for a sequel. I'm not interested in reading the sequel. I have absolutely no interest. We did have a little bit of a character arc with one of the uh, people because you do follow, I think, five different perspectives in here. Sorry, another one I'm not explaining very well. Did, if anyone else can explain this book a little better than me, fine. But I read the whole thing and I couldn't even tell you what it's about. That's how like bad it was, I think. Okay, here's another one. This one I read, this is Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. And this one I read more recently. This is when I started reading more witchy stuff. And this one, I I really enjoyed it for what it was. It's very similar to Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. So if you are familiar with that movie, it does give you that vibe because it's about two sisters. They're from a witchy family, like all women witchy family. They don't have their mother around. And it's like a splice of life. This, this book in particular is definitely like splice of life. And then a guy moves in next door and he's like the love interest of one of the sisters. And one of the sisters has a daughter and she's trying to get away from her ex who was very abusive in the relationship. So very similar themes from Practical Magic. I think the thing that I found with this book and the reason why I rated it like a two, two and a half because it didn't really push it too far. It, it was very safe when there was supposed to be a confrontation, the confrontation didn't really happen. And I feel like, what was the whole point of the book then? If you're just wanting Splice of Life, then absolutely this is fine. I didn't find it super cozy, although I did enjoy reading it. I enjoyed about the different characters that you learn about the small town. I can understand why people would like this book, but I also could see it was quite dated. I think it was, released in 2007 or 2008. So there are some uh, like discussions about um, a gay couple and them breaking up and what it's like to be gay and everything like that. And I feel like in today's world, it would be quite a big different story in a, a lot of modern countries, obviously not everywhere around the world, but it does seem a little dated with some of the things that they were saying in the book. However, I don't think they were saying anything bad in the book. It just seemed like, it was a bit dated for 2024 read. So yeah, I don't know what to say about this book. <laughs> All right, and then I read What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. So this is another one where I finished right in the beginning of September. I think I just started reading this right towards the end of August. And this is definitely YA. So I would say that if you're into YA books and novels, this is more younger YA. I would have preferred it to be a little bit older YA, but it's very, very young YA. I think she's like 17 or 18 years old and she she seems just like a young one. Um, having said that, I did actually enjoy this book. I liked the sort of love interest. It was more of a slower build and I really enjoyed that. So basically it's about a, an Argentinian girl whose father and mother 
are uh, archaeologists, or so we think, or so we believe, and they are they go to Egypt all the time, and she barely sees them. She stays with her aunt and cousin, I believe, if I remember correctly. And then one day we find out that her parents have disappeared and are presumed dead, and she is obviously devastated. She wants to go figure out what's going on, because they were in Egypt at the time, so she decides to hop on the ship, go to Egypt, surprise her uncle who is over there. And then, you know, things start to be not what they seem. And she starts to question who she can trust. And obviously as a reader, you're not entirely sure who you can trust to and what really happened to her parents and whatnot. So I'm not gonna spoil it, but it was kind of like a mystery and it was sweet. I kind of, I really, I, did, I liked it. I liked it. I gave it a three star. It's a low three, but I gave it a three. There is going to be a second book, and I think I will read the second book, because you know what? I thought the writing was fine, and because I kind of enjoyed the love interest, I thought it was sweet. I'm going to see what happens with her and the boy, who I can't remember the name. So this one was sweet. Uh, it, obviously not a five star or anything like that. I'm not gonna rave about it, but I would definitely be open to reading the second one. All right, then I read The Nature of Witches. So this one I tried reading last year and I couldn't get into it. So I picked it back up and I finished it. I finished it like 24 hours. It was such an easy read at the end of the day, a nice, really floppy book. You don't get a lot of these in Europe, at least I don't see a lot of these in Europe. So this one was super easy to read. Um, you know what, I think at the end of the day, this had some really interesting concepts in it about um, the fact that there are certain different types of witches. It's all based on the seasons. You could be a summer witch, a spring witch, winter, autumn, you get it. And our main character is an ever witch, so she can bring forth the power of all of four of the seasons from other witches. And the way that she, she can draw power from other witches and use it at any time. And so what happens is a spring witch is a lot more powerful during the spring as opposed to if they tried to use the power in the winter, for instance. And that's just the way it goes, but she can use her power all year round. And she is very special because they're, they only come around like every few hundred years, every witches. So she is in like the school, this academy, she's training, she's trying to figure out her powers and stuff. So she's young, this is YA. And I thought it was interesting, I thought it was good. The, the thing that I didn't enjoy about this book, which a lot of other books have when you're following a strong female character, she is constantly questioning herself. She is constantly feeling like she's not good enough. And I can understand maybe a character can start off that way, but if the character is that way throughout the whole book and then all of a sudden she switches, it's just a bit boring. You know, I, 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 I feel like women are stronger than that and we don't have to be strong, but also insecure. We can actually be confident and strong. You know, we don't always have to be insecure, but this really powerful being. And so the way that she was written, it, I did get kind of annoyed with her always seeking validation. You know, I know like when people have trauma, sometimes they want that, but I found as a reader, it was getting a little repetitive, a little annoying. There is a romance in here. It's okay, it's sweet. It was fine. I don't really have too much to say about it. Actually, I probably enjoyed this one more than this one. So maybe I should I should change my order. <laughs> but um, yeah, probably enjoyed this one. Actually, just thinking about it, I think it was a sweeter book, but they're kind of very similar together. Okay, next one, I read The Whispering Dark. This one's by Kelly Andrew. I actually just picked up another book. Oh no, no, I haven't. I'm going to, I think, pick up another book by her because I enjoyed the writing. I kind of enjoyed the darker undertones. This is definitely a darker book with some spooky vibes. I thought this was gonna be like dark academia, but it definitely has like a bit of elements of horror that I was hoping would have been pushed a little bit more. I think I would have really enjoyed it if it went just that little bit further and had, it was just a little bit more, you know, like more for it. But I think because it's YA, I believe it's YA, it might not be, but I think it is, it didn't go that far. So whatever, it's fine. I actually, when I finished this book, I kept thinking about it like a week later. So that is a good indicator for me, just when a book is interesting enough or makes you think, 
I still only rated this a three, three and a half though. It's not quite up to par because I felt like the writing was very disjointed. I felt like the story wasn't fully developed. I feel like the book had really, really good ideas and concepts, but the way that it was put together, it just probably needed a really good edit or, you know, it's just something to make it a little bit better because I, I genuinely enjoyed all of the elements and I don't really want to talk too much about it. I mean, it is where you're following a girl called Delaney or Lainey and she is deaf and she doesn't like to tell people about this. So she starts joining this college and she has this connection with, he's not a professor, but he's like a TA, teacher's aide or whatever. Where, so there's a little bit of a weird dynamic there. Cause obviously he's the love interest, right? So there's a weird sort of power dynamic there, which I do fully see. It didn't bother me, but I can see how some people were bothered by it. <laughs> but there's, they have this weird connection Whereas a reader, you kind of know what it is, but she doesn't figure it out for ages, which is kind of annoying. And then also there's like this dark cult or whatever, and you pretty much know who the leader is, it's pretty obvious. And so I just think there should have been a little bit cover of that. I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining myself. I just think it was very obvious. I still enjoyed the elements of it. I just, I think it could have been so much better, but because I really enjoyed like the horror elements and like, I don't know, it was a little bit more unique of a book than I have read recently in terms of what was going on and what they were talking about. So I wanna pick up another book of hers and just see what I think because, I don't know, there was something about this book that I really enjoyed, but it just didn't, it didn't get there in the end, which was so frustrating, but oh well. All right, last book that I read and finished is The Crimson Moth. So I did rate this a four, so this is the highest rated book. It's, I would say it's a low four too. It's not like like a really like strong four. I think it's, you know, I think out of all the books that I've read and shown you, this one I enjoyed the most. Definitely has issues though. I, you know, it's one of those books that you read knowing that it's not the best written book in the world. There's actually a typo as well, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, I, I saw some spelling mistakes in my copy, which um, was fun to see, but it, it just, I think the whole uh, story and the vibe of it was interesting. So basically we follow, I can't remember her name. I can't remember anyone's name today. What's her name? Rune, we follow Rune and she is a witch. And in this world, basically you find out you're a witch, like a women find out if they're a witch when they basically hit puberty. Um, their first flow, what as it were, <laughs> would end up being black. And that would be the sign that you are a witch. And in the world as we are right now, uh, some terrible things happened that we kind of learn throughout the book what really did happen. But you learn pretty early on that witches are being hunted. It is illegal to be a witch. If you are a witch, you're gonna be imprisoned and killed. So it's kind of unfair because at the end of the day, you don't even choose to be a witch, but it is the way it is. And so she's been hiding the fact that she's a witch. And obviously people in her family have been witches as well. Cause some, sometimes it skips a generation in this book. Sometimes it's it's through the generations or whatever. It's just, you're, when you're lucky, you're lucky. And if you're not lucky, then whatever. You could get to live if you're, not, if you're not a witch. So she's in high society too. This is kind of a high society uh, setting. So if you kind of like that, I, I generally like that. I thought it was kind of fun that it wasn't modern time. And she has this persona of being this, you know, flimsy, silly, you know, high society girl, parties all the time. But actually what nobody knows apart from two of her best friends is that she is the Crimson Moth. And she goes and tries to save all of these witches that are being captured. And basically there is this guy who is Gideon and he is a witch hunter. And so of course there's a little romance. It's actually a little, it's like a forced fake dating romance type thing. It was kind of cute in a way. They were both wondering if the other one was trying to trick them or not. So they both were, they started courting each other 
she for the purpose of trying to get more information from him because he is a witch hunter he and he's like one of the best ones he would know where all the witches are being hidden because she that's what she's trying to do she's trying to find them all and he also is kind of trying to find the crimson moth and his aide that talks to him it's like well have you thought about so and so so he decides to try to get close so they're just it's like you know forced dating in a way um but it was fun. It was fun. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, fun to read, really easy to read. I think it's another one that I read in like 24 hours. Super, super easy. And I think another reason why I rated it so high, just because when you read like a silly book that has some sweet concepts, there's a romance in there, there's witches, witch hunters, what can go wrong? You know, it's not the, the best written book in the world. It's not going to be as good as this. I imagine this is going to be a five star, but I enjoyed it. So anyway, those are all the books that I read in the month of September. It was a really good month for me because I really struggled in August. And another reason why I've like barely posted anything. I was super busy, but also just, I just wasn't like, I wasn't in it. And so September hit and I just, I hit my stride and I'm really hoping that it continues in October because I'm really, really enjoying reading books again, <laughs> which is a really, really fun thing to do, obviously. And yeah, so actually, let me just, while you're here, if you haven't clipped away, so I'm gonna finish this. Then I have these two that are by my bed that I'm going to start reading once I'm done with that one. So Long Live Evil and then The Spell Shop. And then I also have like, all of those, where are they? They're all here, yeah. All of these books here that I picked for my full TBR, which I do have a video on, which I will start going through once I'm done with these ones. So I'm excited, like things are going, you know, I have some like more witchy books, but also like horror books that I wanna read as well as we lead on to October. So I'm excited, I'm excited. I, I've, I, had a, I feel like even though a lot of these were like two, three stars, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that I read so much because it just got me in the mood to keep reading. And sometimes I feel like when you read a five star book, you're almost too scared to read another one because nothing is going to compare to it for a while. So I think I'm, I'm, uh, this one, it seems to me that it might be a five star. If it is, are these going to be five stars? Probably not. And so I might rate these lower even if I do enjoy them. But I don't know, they're, they're completely different types of vibes though, to be fair, than this one. This one's more like cozy and just, it's just written beautifully. So anyway, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching and um, I will see you all next time. Bye.